Hey internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All America Casino Guide, a channel dedicated to providing you with all the tips, tricks, tutorials, and trivia you need to know about casinos and casino games. This week we're going to try to talk about three questions about re-raises that you were maybe too afraid to ever ask. Can you always re-raise? No. The answer to that question is no. You can't always re-raise. There's a couple of scenarios that uh, re-raising is actually illegal. Um, these particular situations uh, are very obscure, but they do exist. Uh, the most common situation would be where you're in a no limit game of Texas Hold'em, for example, and one particular player has gone all in. Uh, for say $300 and you have them covered by a long shot you have maybe a thousand dollars sitting in, in chips so the most you can call in that particular case is just their uh, all-in bet which would be the uh, $300 I was just talking about you can't then all of a sudden decide to go in for more unless there's still potential players uh, yet to call that initial uh, all-in bet so if you want to maybe call their all in, but also tell the other players at the table, hey, I want to go in for even more, you could then uh, go in for 500, covering that all in 300 bet, but also saying to the other players at the table, if you want to play, it's going to cost you $500. The other situation where it might be illegal to actually re-raise is if you've reached the betting cap uh, at a particular table that has fixed limits. Be very aware of what the stakes are at any particular table of poker you sit at. Every game is either going to be fixed limit, no limit, or pot limit. So be very aware of how the betting structure of the particular game is before you sit down and start participating. So the next question is, when is the betting limit reached? Specifically uh, in games of limit poker. Uh, typically speaking, uh, a, in any game that has a fixed limit, there's typically a limit of three raises on any particular round of betting. Uh, otherwise, without these fixed limits, um, bets would just kind of go to infinity and eventually every single player would have pushed all their chips in or folded before the hand has actually reached its conclusion. Um, so what I mean by that is typically uh, in a fixed limit game, you'll have one player making a bet and then a player raising that bet, and then another player re-raising that, and then a subsequently a third player re-raising that, and then kind of locking in the bet at that point. And now uh, for that round of betting, there will be no more allowable re-raises. And we're now fixed at whatever the last amount was uh, that we raised the, or rather re-raised the bet to. So for example, if I have, uh, four players sitting at a table playing Texas Hold'em and the initial player go ahead and bets a $5 bet um, and the fixed limits of the table are $5 increments, okay? So that means that player two is maxed out at uh, raising uh, by $5, so we go from $5 to $10 and then this player is going to be maxed out at raising, uh, and again, only $5, so the most they can bet is 15 and then the third player is going to, again, be limited to that $5 increment. So the most they can bet is 20, represented by this blue chip here, okay? Now, that means that player one, who placed the initial bet of $5, is going to have to put 15 more in to play the hand because now the bet is at 20. Uh, but they are not allowed to, to re-raise at this point because we already have the three raises that have locked the hand in at this particular amount. So this is a good way with fixed limits, you can kind of have a good indication of what the most you'll ever see uh, bet in a particular round. Obviously, this uh, is only pertinent uh, if you think people at the table are actually going to be raising. Um, so you'll find many tables where people aren't necessarily raising regularly. Uh, and that all depends on how confident they are with their hands and the money that they're playing with. So um, subsequently though, uh, if we did this a different way, we have player one uh, betting just $5, then player two uh, raising $5 to the bet to 10. We have this player just going ahead and calling 
Uh, this player is going to raise to 15. Uh, that's the second raise. Now this player is could could then uh, raise the bet um, to uh, 20 as well as themselves, essentially raising the bet to $25 uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, what's important to know about this is it doesn't really matter who is the three bets. It only matters uh, that after three raises in you've pretty much locked in uh, that particular amount for the hand. So it you, really important that you know what the limits are in any sort of uh, limit game. The last thing I wanna talk about is probably the most obscure situation that you'll ever run across, which is where action has been closed and no other players may reopen the action. Um, essentially, this is a rare situation where a player has essentially less money than they are required to make a raise in the first place. So for example, if a player only had uh, $20 and the player in front of them bets 12, uh, then normally you are required to make at least a $24 bet if you wish to raise. A raise requires that you raise as much as the initial bet. So 12 plus 12 is 24. If you do not have 24, you can go all in for less. So if this particular situation, the player only has $20, they're allowed to bet just that $20. Uh, let's we'll take a look at an example here. I have three players, player A has 100, player B also has 100, and player C is short stacked at only 20 chips, uh, $20 in chips left. So player A in this situation is going to check with player B then deciding that they wanna go in for 15 uh, $15, okay, a 10 and a five. Um, now, player uh, C has decided that they actually would like to raise, but unfortunately, a raise in this particular situation would require at least a $30 bet, because you the initial bet was 15, you need to make sure your raises are as big as the initial bet. Um, so 30 would be the initial bet, but they don't have 30, so they're able to go all in for 20, which would be less, okay? So now, uh, once player A matches that 20 uh, and chooses not to raise player B, then that means that player B is locked in at that, tw at that uh, $20 bet, and they're not able to raise even though they would normally be able to uh, call this particular player out and try to get more money out of them because this player has passed their opportunity to raise that locks this particular player out and any subsequent players after them uh, into uh, a position where they won't be able to re-raise any further. It's a very obscure situation that doesn't happen too often, but uh, if it does, it's you need to know this rule uh, beforehand. That concludes this look at three questions about re-raising and the legality of the action. Uh, I hope you found this video informative and also hopefully entertaining. If you did, do us a favor and like the video. It really gives us that support and knowledge that what we're doing is really resonating with you guys. Also, make sure to leave a comment down below if there's any questions or concerns that you have about what I said today. Make sure to check out the rest of the videos on our channel. We have so many great videos, tutorials, tips, tricks, and even trivia about casinos and casino games, blackjack, slot machines, the list goes on. Also, make sure to ring that notification bell. If by ringing the notification bell, you'll be informed every single time we put a new video up on the channel. And you certainly don't wanna miss what we have coming down the line in the near future. My name's Dominic. This is the All-America Casino Guide reminding you Play responsibly.